All right, let's keep going. So um, let's let's handle term number two over here. Let's see what we can do to approximate this thing. So uh, let's call that. So what were we supposed to do? Oh yeah, this one this one's really interesting. In fact, you'll see this this situation pops up twice here. We have a situation where we are taking the integral of the divergence of something. Um, so let's let's do that. So uh, the divergence theorem says that if I have an integral over a control volume that involves the divergence, I can convert that into a surface integral. This is where things get a little interesting. So now we can convert that into um, a situation where we have whatever this thing was in parentheses, rho u phi dotted with the unit normal of the control surface um, ds. So this, or let me call it da, so so that it's a little more obvious. So this is the outer uh, surface area. Now, um, just as a reminder that like in the divergence theorem, this is always meant to be the outward facing unit normal. So like, for example, if I have a triangle and that's my, if that's my control volume slash control surface, then, and that's my centroid, then the outward facing unit normal is this way. So like, let's say there's three different, so in a triangle, there'd be three different outward facing unit normals depending on what surface I'm on. On a tetrahedron, I guess it would be, um, I don't know, four? No, uh, yes, four. If, it, if I had like the three dimensional analog of that. So anyway, so, uh, so this is our control volume, let's say, and what we're gonna do is instead of trying to solve a volumetric integral, we'll try to um, approximate the area um, integral. So the f the so what is this thing? This this thing basically represents the amount of this scalar flowing across the interface. So if I if I look at this really carefully, what I'll see that this is rho velocity dotted with n dA. That's actually the mass flow rate per unit area. So this thing rho rho v a is a mass flow rate so rho v well v dot n so this is the mass flow rate going across the interface and then remember that this is some quantity measured per unit mass so this represents the amount of my scalar flowing across the interface um, per you know on a yeah just the total amount so this is truly a conservation statement um, a different way so since we will always have um, objects that have a certain number of sides to them rather than like curved objects. What I can do is I can write this as a sum over all the faces. I'll just call that F. So those are my faces. So I can write this as rho u phi dot n dot, dot n hat. on each face times the area of each face. Um, so that's actually not an, well, okay, yeah, I, I suppose, uh, let's see, I suppose if it was an integral, that would be an exact quantity. Um, let me see here, well, how do I wanna do this? Yeah, so um, that's actually, so at that point, it's not an exact expression anymore because I need some way of writing this average value here. Um, but that's easy enough to do. Um, so what we need to do really is figure out, um, you know, what is the area average over the face of this quantity. Um, and so what we'll do um, to do that, so first of all, this presents a bit of an issue in that, let's say that we are storing so typically what we'll do in a cell-centered scheme is the only stored values are the values at the centroid. We don't actually know anything about the phi values or even the u values most of the time along these faces. We don't have those values available. So um, we have to approximate all that stuff. So um, here's the, the basic idea is that we'll break this out and we will write this as the density at the face, uh, let's say the sum over 
all the faces of the density at the face, the um, correct average value of u dot n on the face, the correct value of phi on the face, um, times the area of the actual face. And then for like each of these individual quantities, what we'll need to do is actually do some sort of interpolation um, to figure out what the value at the face is. Um, so like typically the way you do that is that, like let's say I have a tetrahedron element here. So I've got a centroid here, and I've got another centroid here. Um, so let's, let's call that C and A. Um, so A, I'm gonna use A to stand for the word adjacent. Um, so this is, this is the cell that I'm actually like trying to write the conservation equation for. This is its centroid and this is the adjacent um, element. So typically what you want to do here is if you're trying to get the average value over that, inter over that face, um, what you would do is make an interpolation. You would say that like the, the phi value um, could be approximated as some sort of interpolation between what goes on at the centroid um, plus you know so some some set of weighting factors that weights the amount of phi at this centroid and the amount in the adjacent cell and interpolate it somewhere in between so depending on how you do that interpolation um, the weighting factors could be slightly different so you could imagine that like for example the most obvious weighting factor is to just take this value plus this value divided by two if it was a linear um, you know gradient in between I you know essentially interpolate the value right here you know at the intersection in between and hopefully that would represent the average value over the face so that's like one way to do it